Hey, I have to be honest. It's okay to be honest. Another one was a 300 pound deadlift, right? And this got put into a video at, right after we got married, right? Yeah, probably Around one of the time. first, you know, public videos we did for a TV show, was that or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't remember what that video was. And they was hated for. you then. Oh my gosh. And they still the hate back, you for the backlash, that. the backlash of that was was harsh. Welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Shaw. And today I am joined by my wife, Carrie Shaw. And this is actually a podcast that a lot of people have been asking for. So since I got going and was doing it, I was getting messages. Hey, can we have Carrie on? Could you talk about this? Talk about that. So there's a lot of different things that we potentially could talk about uh, with this. But uh, we put some questions out and everybody is kind of wondering about our life, our business, how we manage that, balance our marriage and our kids and our time and all that. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna mix in some fun stories as well. But uh, how are you doing, babe? You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good. It's yeah. fun to be on this side of the wall, I guess you'd say, versus trying to keep the kids quiet on the other side of the wall. Yes, and that has <laughs> happened uh, with several of these podcasts, yes. especially when we're at the other house. Yep. It was you know the kids in the background and Carrie is trying to keep them quiet and balance that. And, you know, so, th I mean, we're talking about balance. A primitive already. setup. Yes. Starting from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. But you really are. And, and I have said this before, and I, I say it frequently or try to say it frequently. But Carrie, for people that don't know, Carrie runs more stuff behind the scenes for our companies, for me, for our boys, than most people realize. You know, like I'm the face and... You know, I'm out and, and doing all this different stuff, which is great. But without Carrie behind me and helping, I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that I do. And I wouldn't really be the person that I am. So I have to thank you for that. And it's it's going to be fun to talk to you a little bit more about some of that and how it works and, and, and get your thoughts on it too. You know, because sometimes we talk about this and, hey, you know, sometimes we don't talk about it enough. So... Well, thank you. And we do talk about it a lot. Brian is definitely, you voice your gratitude towards me or for me, I guess you'd say, even though I'm not the face and I prefer not to be the face, but yeah, you definitely tell me you appreciate me and show you, show me that you appreciate me. So I thank you for that. <laughs> so Carrie kind of came into my life in 2014 going into 2015. So we got married in 2015. For anyone doing the math, that's a quick come into my life and get married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was, but but when you when you know, you know. And that's, you know, I, I was, uh, I guess I was a little bit older um, or older, whatever you want to call that. Like I had known what I was looking for and what I wanted. And, and you know, when we started talking, it was just kind of a, literally every box was checked and when every box is checked i f i feel like you don't need to look anymore well, so that's kind of how that went and uh it, it's been it's been wonderful but you know at that time you were a teacher yes i taught high school math uh for a total of 10 years i'm probably getting ahead of you but yes i used to teach high school math coach soccer coach soccer but you also played soccer yes i played soccer at one point as well yeah, At, in college. Yes, <laughs> you're, you're you're not you're That's not talking. That's probably one enough. of Brian's uh, check box checks <laughs> checked off boxes. It, it was it was and another. <laughs> so this is this is good. We're gonna people are <laughs> hopefully you're not all gonna hate me after we hear this. But uh, so I did I did have some some things that I was looking for when it, it came to the woman that I was gonna marry and and one of them they're gonna hate and these you were for this. these were ideals. I don't know if you should say right? this out loud. I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it just because that's what's going to happen right now. But uh, one was that uh, my future wife would have played a college sport because I feel like that shows uh, determination, dedication, hard work, a lot of those things, and athletic ability if you're going to have kids in the future. They're hating you right now. I, I, hey, I have to be honest. It's okay to be honest. <laughs> Another one was... A 300-pound deadlift, right? And this got put into a video 
at, right after we got married, right? Yeah, probably Around one of the time. first, you know, public videos we did for a TV show, was that or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't remember what that video was And they was hated for. you then. Oh my gosh. And they still the hate back, you The backlash, that. the backlash of that was, was harsh, it right? Was. And you, you, I, I think you might've brought it up. You brought it up and said, well, Brian wanted me or required <laughs> me or something to deadlift 300 pounds and you had done 305. Yes, that's correct. 305. And so you met the criteria and I thought that was great. And all these people were like, well, how in the world could you ever require your wife or want your wife to do these things? And, you know, I mean, it, this was, I, I come up with, uh, lists and dreams and, you know, I, um, I don't want to call them expectations, but goals, right? Goals to marry a woman that played a college sport and mm -hmm. deadlifted at least 300 pounds. Look, what accomplishments you yeah. have made. Well, and on top of that, being smart, being funny, being beautiful. I mean, the list went on and on and on. These are the ones that people know about, but you know, the, all the other things were met. You could talk, you could communicate with me. We could go back and forth. You, you were independent, you were strong, all of these things, right? So you met all the criteria. So yes, we went from, from the start like through our dating process, but we did date long distance for a little while That's at correct. least. Yeah. And, and that was, I think, wonderful, you know, for anybody out there that's, you know, getting into a relationship, if you can't talk to your partner that you, that you're getting into the relationship with, if you can't just sit and have a conversation, that's not good. Right. So you and I spent a lot of time messaging, a lot of time talking on the phone and then that um, one time you were in Turkey, was it? I was in Turkey for an appearance, yeah. for an appearance. And uh, literally, I think we spent, I don't know, six or seven hours on the phone. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was a good decision at the time. Yeah. About a month later when the phone bill came, not a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an expensive phone bill. And, yeah. and uh, I, I want to say it was like seven or $800 phone bill, but it was, honestly, I would do it again in a heartbeat because it was, it's a great memory. Uh, and you and I, like in that conversation, I feel like for whatever reason, and I don't know why it took me going to Turkey to have that conversation, but we went through a lot of really deeper things talking about, you know, future goals and, and where we wanted to go and that type of thing. And, and so, you know, if I had to pay seven or $800 to get that and to get to that level, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I mean, think about all the people that meet people at bars and all the drinks they had to buy. I mean, seven hundred dollars is nothing. <laughs> I'd rather. I'd. I honestly would rather have the conversation. Yeah. It was. It was a great conversation, and I would yeah. agree. We talked a lot because we dated long distance, yep. and uh, I think really started our relationship on a with a really good foundation. And we talked about, you know, things that maybe take people longer to talk about, you know, mm. but we really talked about our beliefs and our family and our goals and, you know, things we haven't accomplished and we're working towards and a hundred percent communication was key for us right from the start. Yeah. We were very, very, very upfront with everything. And I was, I feel like for me, I was kind of at a point where I was willing to put it all out there and say, Hey, look, this is, this is what I believe. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do this is my expectation. And you got to ask me everything. I got to ask you everything. It was such a, a breath of fresh air to be able to get to that level. And so, you know, immediately there's no questions, nothing, nothing was held back. Right. A hundred percent. I think looking back to that, we both felt pretty comfortable in our own skin. You had mentioned that you were a little bit older, but I was a little bit older as well. And I think at that point we were both comfortable in our own skin and this is who I am and this is what I have to offer and this is what I'm looking for and it sounds a little harsh maybe but if you like it great and if you don't that's okay as well and it yeah. wasn't it wasn't a bad thing but we led with honesty right from the start absolutely yeah and, and that's I think why in my mind why I was able to progress so quickly because it was all of my questions and, and anything that I might have been concerned about that, like you said, maybe sometimes would take longer to get to all of that was done. And so I was to a point where I wanted to ask you to marry me. I wanted to get married. I wanted to go down that road and, and we did, and we did pretty quickly. 
um, got married on the 4th of July, huh? right? And, and for the guys out there, that <laughs> was one of the smartest things ever because it's always a holiday and, and I you can't forget. I literally never ever will ever forget. And we get to have fireworks every year. So I think uh, we picked July 4th because you were competing I was, all the time, I was, all yeah. the, all the time, traveling all the time. And it was like three weekends that year that were available yep. between uh, your competitions and the venue that we had looked at. And we're like, Hey, free fireworks. Let's do it. Yep. And it <laughs> fell. Uh, yeah. It just, it fell perfect. It worked perfect. It was, it was uh, really, really wonderful to be fair. And so we started our life from there. Yeah, right. 100%. Started our life from there. And, um, you know, I, I know, and I have shared with you and I, as I've said many times on this podcast and other places, I had big goals. I had big expectations, big things that I wanted to achieve. And, you know, I feel like in a lot of ways at the start, you went along with it, but maybe you weren't sure how we were going to get there. I couldn't, Is that fair? I couldn't see the vision. Yeah. I don't think I believed in you. And I wanted to support you, but I can't necessarily say that I saw the vision. I still quite often don't necessarily <laughs> think that I see the vision now. Um, but I, my, my goal was always to support you in, in your dreams. And I w I've always kind of been more of a, I would say, entrepreneur, wanting to do different things. I want to kind of create my own path and, and, and do different things in that way. And so I've kind of been outside of the box, so to speak, my entire life. And I really appreciated that you supported me because there's a lot of women out there that would say, wait a minute, you're doing the strong man thing. And you know, okay, you're trying to maybe start the, this business on the side, or you've got expectations of doing other businesses that's not a stable environment. It's, you know, not, it's not a career. It's not yeah. a, a career that could support our family, what we hope to have. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think there was some of those conversations earlier, earlier for us, you know, because you were in a career, right? You were, you were doing My that. mindset was very different than yours. Yes. Uh, when we started our relationship, I was very much, I go to my job. I have a boss. My boss tells me what to do. And yeah, my mindset was very different than yours from the beginning or at the beginning, I should say. Yep. So at what point, at what point did that start to change? Because I think for me, and I've told you this before, I think I saw more in you potential wise. than I saw myself. And I, I just, I could see how hard of a worker you were and how you handled things. And in my mind, I think I kind of had visions of, of being closer to where we are now and where we're going at the start. And I think that, you know, for you, it was a big change when you actually decided to leave your teaching position. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, you know, we had already had Braxton, so our first, our, our oldest, and then, um, then we had Kellen. And then at that point, things had kind of picked up to the point where we needed to make some hard decisions about me not being able to handle everything by myself. And if you were then going to go back and teach another year, what were we going to do and how were we going to be able to handle it? And so that's, that was, a, I remember that being a very pivotal spot for us. Absolutely. Like as a I, couple, because you have the, you have the boys at that point. And so we you know, maybe in, in a lot of ways, or maybe we, but you felt like, Hey, I know that I've got this secure teaching position and, and no matter and what happens insurance. with Brian and health insurance, and health insurance. I, I did that after we got married, huge. I did go on your health insurance. That was true. And that was a big, a big part of it too. But, you know, I think that that stability losing some of that or, or kind of walking away from that, I think was very hard for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's kind of, not that you're necessarily giving this as a two-part question, but when did I gain that confidence and kind of see in myself what you were seeing in me, I think was when we had Braxton. And I can remember, <laughs> I came to you with the idea of where I was going to start doing personal training. And I created uh, my website where I was 
basically doing home fitness with mostly moms, but women and kind of showing them, hey, you can be in shape at home and you can work out with your kids. And somewhere in there, and that Braxton was born in June of 2016, and somewhere kind of in his first year of life, that confidence kind of grew. And then Kellen is 22 months younger than Braxton. And when we had Kellen was right about the same time that we were at the point we need to hire someone to start helping you or I would help you, which meant mm-hmm. I would lose, leave my job. And that meant leaving the stability of teaching. And again, I know it's, it maybe sounds silly to someone listening, but for us, I think the biggest part of that decision was the life insurance or not the life insurance, the health, health insurance, insurance yeah. the health insurance, because as a teacher, we had great insurance for our whole family and Obviously, what you do as a career or competing wise is a little bit different. So trying to get health insurance for our family and make sure we'd be taken care of and that we could afford health insurance and we had two little boys was very, very scary for us at that time. Yeah, it was. I do. I remember that. I remember that. And that was a very pivotal thing where we were almost thinking, is there a way for you to still teach just to keep that piece of the puzzle until we could transition and I think it just, the door kind of opened where there was that opportunity to go for it. And I think that you believed in me and that we believed in each other. I believe that you could help me. And I I think that you kind of knew where I was going and you could see that things were starting to pick up. And I think at that point also, you could see where I was falling down because things were growing, but it was getting very, very difficult for me to manage. And so I would agree with that. I think kind of as teaching was ending uh, or and Kellen was coming, I was starting to help a little bit with maybe some emails and things like that. And where that's where I kind of felt I'm really good, maybe behind the scenes with office type of stuff. Yeah. And things were growing for you more publicly in the sense of you know, a t- the TV show or competing more, yeah. different things like that. Yeah, so taking that leap for us, I think, was was great. And to be fair, I don't think we regretted it one time at all. I, I don't regret it. Have you, you've never regretted it? No, no, <laughs> not at all. And and I think that, that, you know, some of the questions I think, you know, people asked, you know, what was that like? And was our relationship different from where you had your own job and I kind of had my own job to where we started working together. And I don't, I really don't think that we had much of a problem because our communication skills were good enough to talk through issues. Now, that's not to say that there hasn't been things that we've had to work through and, and, and to be fair, work on, Absolutely. like as we're working together. But, you know, I've, I've um, been big and you know this from the start, it's kind of like, we're never going to go to bed mad ever. That's not something that we do. So it's, if there's something going on, something that I'm frustrated by, something that you're frustrated by, we're always going to talk about it always. Yeah. And we're not going to go to bed mad at, we're not going to let it fester. So if, if, and you, I think we're much more of a person. I'm more of a- fester yeah <laughs> fester. yeah let things fester yeah. and build no, up i could and, go i could go to bed mad and not talk and stuff like that but yeah. yeah absolutely that's something our communication has i'd say been strong from the start but has only improved and something we continue to work on still to this well, day and you need to and and i think that you know that that balance we've had we've had to work on it and, and you know i know that you know early on uh in our uh, married life, if you want to call it that, we always had a date night. Yes, <laughs> always had a date night. It was one night per week that we would, no matter what was going on, we would do that. And then as to kids preface, came, I was going to say to preface this: this was before kids. It was before kids. Every yeah. week we had a date, a yep. date night. And then you know things kind of progressed from there. But we have to to some extent, and and I'm not saying it's perfect because life is not always going to be perfect, but I feel like that's one thing that we've tried to do is at least if nothing else, try to take some time to talk to one another. And the other thing, and this is an ongoing thing that you and I have to work on, is not always talking about business. <laughs> that, right? that is definitely something I think we still struggle with at times right now. 
as far as talking about business, but we definitely find somehow to make that time. And it used to be great date nights where we went out for, we always went for Mexican and got ice cream after. And it was great. You know, you left the house, we kind of got dressed up. Now we still do that sometimes, but sometimes quote unquote date night or time for each other is we tucked the boys in bed and we went and sat on the the back porch and just talked for 10 minutes. But it's kind of our way of connecting with each other. Just, just you and me. Yeah. So that taking that leap was great. Right. Yeah. And at that time we were running everything out of a bedroom in our home. Yep. So a guest bedroom. it was just a guest bedroom downstairs in the house. And that's kind of where everything, everything lived. And then we would, you know, pack orders, take them upstairs, take them out. And, uh, you know, things have progressed a lot since then. Yes. Right. Yes. It's been it's been a lot of growth and a lot of support and 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 to be fair a lot of hard work that's that's made the path open up. But what was it like for you, right? Because I've got I've got my perspective on it, and you know sometimes I'm the I'm the one that's always two steps forward, right? So I I don't take a lot of time, and this is maybe a fault of mine to some extent. I don't take a lot of time to celebrate the the small victories or, hey, we're moving forward or, hey, we did this or, hey, we're doing better. I'm thinking, well, okay, yeah, we did better, but we need to be getting to this point. And, and I've already got this in my head where I want to work on this, this, and this, and it's, it's the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And so for you, what is that like being with me because, and, and you've shared this too, yeah. that I'll come in at, at, you know, whatever, one in the morning, 1230, and I'll wait, I'll sometimes wake you up and say, Carrie, I wanted to do this, or I have this idea, right? You know, whatever. And you're like, oh my gosh, couldn't this have waited till morning? And it, I'll just get on this track where I can't stop. And um, what has it been like? What has it been like for you with me? Exhausting. And, <laughs> exhausting. One word, exhausting. Uh, yeah. Gosh. Um, it's, I don't, I don't have one word. It's been a lot of things. It's inspiring. It's motivating. It is exhausting. It's, it's kind of everything all rolled up in one. I believe in you. And I think in a way you've created that track record with me, as silly as that may sound is, you know, you had this vision, I'm going to sell a t-shirt. I'm like, no one's going to buy this t-shirt. You know what I mean? And it's turned into five t-shirts and you sit at the sewing machine. I mean, how many years have you been sitting at the sewing machine or the boys have sat in your lap and you're doing the customer service emails after you finished packing the shirts and stuff like that. And so I saw your hard work. I saw your dedication and your just constant drive to make things better, to make them grow. And, and honestly, I think as things have evolved to make it better for our family, you know what I mean? But what is it like for me? I don't know. I just, am I allowed to say that I'm proud of us? Like it's, it's really hard some days. It's really hard. And um, I think right now we're going through one of those hard phases, the Shaw Classics a couple weeks away. And, yeah. uh, you know, the boys are in school and it's summertime and we just moved and we're trying to, we have a still new puppy and people are in and out of our house every single day the painters were here for 13 hours yesterday and it's hard it's really hard but I believe in it it's exciting it's inspiring I mean I it's so many things rolled up in to one but I'm like thankful to be on this journey with you and I like to believe that we're that we're doing good things yeah. um and and that's I think sometimes why you just said you know we talk about business too much but at the end of the day Sometimes I need that confirmation of, of, hey, what we're doing, we're making a difference. We're going in the right direction. Hey, did you see this email that came in today that whatever you did changed this person's life? And yeah. I think that was the things that are more important to me than, I don't know, this person said some PR, won some contest, and that's really great. But the people that email and say, I've lost 100 pounds or something, it's, it's cool to just be on this journey with you and see how you're making a difference in people's lives. And it's, it's fun to be part of it. And it's tiring some days, but for the most part, it's just, it's awesome. Well, 
And you're, no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And I think that sometimes for me, it's important to step back and realize that too. And, you know, to realize, I mean, the people that are listening to this or the people that, that get that message that you can always try to improve and you can always do better. And all it takes is the next day and getting up and making a few choices that make you better. And you're trying to be great. You're trying to be great in all these different things. And, you know, I, um, very often, and, and, and you know, this it's, it's when the cameras are on, I'm the same person that I am when the cameras are off, 100%. right? Like this conversation is something that we could talk about. And, and, and in all fairness, I think, um, even last night we were talking about different things and it's, yeah, you know, I was very nervous about and, this and we, we well, talked about, you know, just in general, like how do we feel and yeah. the conversations we have behind the camera or I don't know, not when the microphone's on or something aren't the exact same conversations yeah. we're having right now. Well, you have, you have to, and people, I think people can see that. Right. So you have to be unwavering. So it's, it's, you know, if we're going to make a supplement, it's going to be the best supplement that we can possibly make. If we're going to sell a shirt, it's going to be the best shirt that we can possibly sell. And we're not going to compromise, never, ever compromise, zero compromise when the hard decisions have to be made for the company, for business. And this is a stuff that, that not very many people get to see or, or even hear about. And, and to be fair, they don't need to hear about it. What they need to know is that like from you, from me, from our team, we're going to give the best that we possibly can always because we care about them. And I think that people can see that caring. And when you came on board with me, it was so apparent to me the way that you handled all of the emails and handled all of, you know, the turns or support or whatever, like making sure people got the right things and that type of stuff. And that's exactly what I would do. I think the connection, the connection with, uh, I guess our customers is what you would say yeah. is the most important thing to me. And, you know, I even talk to people on social media and they, you know, they're a mom just like I am and they're experiencing the same struggles that I am of little boys or whatever it may be. Yeah. And, yeah, you are very much like, we're going to put out the best product that we can put out. And I agree with that. But for me, it's like connecting with people. We, we are the same. And when I look at my little boys, I want them to know that mom's doing the best she can. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that every mom and dad out there or whoever wants to be able to look at their kids and say, I'm doing the best that I can. So yes, it's, it's a product, but like, I want our kids to know that we're doing it the best way we can. Yeah. We are doing the best with everything, business, our home life, whatever. We're doing it the best we can. And tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it even better. Yep. And I don't know how yet I'm going to do it better tomorrow, but sure. I'm certainly going to try. Well, it's, it's, it's attacking each and every day. And I think that that's why you know, for us, we're such a good team because you balance me out in ways that before we were together, I didn't even realize I needed to be balanced out. And, you know, and I, and I'll say this too, you are a perfect match for me because you inspire me to be better. And I think that I do the same for you and, and it's that you team, same. you know, together. So you're saying, okay, people write in and say that I inspire them in different ways. And, and, um, you know, I think in, in the same way, I think you touch people that way too, where your motivation to them, whether they're a mom and you've done a lot of that, like you said, you tried to get out there with, um, you know, more training type of content. Hey, you can work out from home. Your kids are right there. You can set them down and work out with them. And, and you still do that to this day very much. I mean, you put out videos on Instagram where the boys will be with you or the boys will be trying to get in with your workout. And, and it's just a family type dynamic. And I think a lot of times, um, and I think that this is something that people have asked about too, is once you have kids taking a back seat and how, how do we manage that? I, right. Do you, I think you mean how do we take people think that we as parents should take a backseat? Just a parent in general. Yeah. Because a, right? yeah, a lot a of I think general. I think a lot of people have kids and they're like, well, I did have these goals 
And I did have this ambition. I did want to do this, but now I'm a parent and, and that needs to take a back seat. Yeah. Well, going back to your question earlier about, you know, when did I kind of gain that confidence in myself that, you know, I could do something else beyond teaching and teaching is incredible. But what I'm saying is like in myself that I started believing in myself and that's when we had Braxton. And for me, Braxton made me want to be more and do more and lead by example versus, versus saying, okay, I don't know how to put this in a correct way, but saying my life's over my, my life as Carrie and training and wanting to do X, Y, Z. I can't do that anymore. I'm now Braxton's mom and that is my sole focus. And I think having Braxton made me just want to be better. I wanted to show him like, look what your mommy can do. And I'm doing this for you. And look what hard work is. And, you know, all those things. To me, it inspired me to be more and do more when we had kids. And I like to think that our kids are seeing that. Yep. Um, I hope they do. You know, they, they say things about us as far as what we're doing or why are people taking pictures or whatever. And they don't necessarily get it right now. Um, but I hope we're instilling something in them about, you know, having dreams and working really hard for them. Well, a lot, I think, you know, and you and I have talked about this too. I think kids, a lot of times you can say things until you can't talk anymore, but if they see you doing things, they will pay attention to that. And it's been amazing for me to see what the boys will pick up on and try to do themselves just by watching. Absolutely. And they, so they get to see you walk the walk, so to speak. They get to see me walk the walk. And I think that's what's important. But also, I think that it's important for any parents out there, you have to go after your goals as well, right? And, and it's not, your kids will be inspired by that. And also, I think in a lot of ways, you'll be a better parent by showing your kids that you can go after a goal, that you can work hard, that you can be dedicated. And that might mean for you, for example, every single morning you get up before the boys are out of bed and before me so that you can do your workout, you can start your day off the right way. And then I have, you know, throughout my career, tried to plan, especially after we had kids, tried to plan my training around the kids so that I could be there to be a good dad, to be a good husband, and to, to make the time for my family but also have enough time to train. Yeah, I think it's uh, not stopping something. It's more changing as far as, for example, we both trained before kids, yep. but now it's we've changed when we train, but we still do the training, if, if you will. You know what I mean? So it's not that we have stopped things that have made us happy. It's we've reworked them so we can kind of find that balance of, doing things that still make us happy. Cause I really strongly believe when I feel good about myself or happy with myself or that I'm working towards something, it just makes me happier, which makes me a better mom or makes me a better wife. Yeah. And I mean, it's no secret in our house. If, if Carrie misses her workout, <laughs> it's not going to be a great day for us yeah. as a family. So I think it's taking that time for yourself as a parent to do something that makes you happy or makes you feel good about yourself so you can be better for your family. Yeah. And I think that being supportive also to one another. So there, there are times where sometimes, you know, whatever day it might be and, and the circumstances, but there's times where I'll take the boys so you can go work out or do your thing or if you have to handle something else and vice versa. But I feel like the vice versa happens a lot more just because I'll train later in the day. And I think a lot of people listening to this potentially would be interested in that. And what is it like for you being in your shoes? Be with, married to you. <laughs> yeah. But when I have to, when I have to yeah. contest prep and when I'm getting ready for a contest and, you know, there, there's times where you are my person where I, I will come in and I'll be open and say, hey, my training session didn't go great today right? And I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm, you know, I may be overthinking 
the training or why it's not, why it wasn't good or what was going on. And so you have to kind of deal with that. But then maybe on the backside of that, you don't necessarily, if I have a great day, I'm kind of like, Hey, I had a great day, whatever. But it's, it's, you're not really, sometimes you are in the gym with me, but a lot of times you're not. And so it's kind of waiting for, okay, did, did he have a great day? Not a great day. How's the prep going? Is he stressed, not stressed? And, and how do I manage all that? But what is it like for you as I've gone into some of these bigger contests and maybe how has that changed from earlier when we didn't have kids to when we started, you know, had our first kid, second kid. And then, you know, now it's, it's just different. We've got the businesses have grown, things have progressed and things have changed in that way. But what, it, what is it like? And, I, and this is a question genuinely for me too. Like how, how has that been? Like, is it, what is it like? It's uh I would say it's changed somewhat with the boys, but it's always nerve wracking. And, and when you're saying this, all I can think of is back at the house we moved into when I was still pregnant with Braxton. So technically like he wasn't earth side, you know what I mean? I wasn't taking care of him yet. And the garage, well, it was our, the garage was attached to the house, but we parked our cars outside because the garage that we moved to this house for the garage. So Brian could put his gym yeah. in it and you trained late at night back yeah. then. And the living room, family room shared a wall with the garage. And I just, I knew you and I could hear the buildup of the songs and I knew, all right, Eminem's on, this is the lift. <laughs> the house was shaking and is this, is it going to be a good night or is it going to be a, a bad night of training? And, um, as your wife, it just like, it would break my heart when it was a, a bad night, I guess you would say, because I knew how hard you were working. And, and when it was a good night, it was, I was so happy for you, but for the same reason, I just knew how hard you were working. And I, I wanted I wanted your dreams to come true, really. I mean, it's, it's as basic as that. Um, as the kids came, I would <laughs> try to sleep when you were training because it, it was late and stuff like that. But I was still, how training go? Or, you know, sometimes honestly couldn't sleep or I would text you and, hey, let me know, did you, did you get that deadlift tonight? Hey, did you hit that log tonight? Yeah. And it's, it's been hard not being in the gym because before kids, I would try to come to training. Yep. Um, once the kids came along, I, I couldn't come to training at 10 o'clock at night or whatever. Yeah. And as the businesses have grown and the kids, I don't necessarily come to training all the time. I try to stop in here and there and I know it's going to be a big day. And, you know, I try to text you and say, Hey, you're going to have a great day today. Or, you know, yep. you got this, that type of thing. And, Still though, I just, I just want you to have a great day. Cause I know how hard you're working in the gym and what you're working towards. But I feel with the kids, what's been hard is my attention has had to be taken away from, from you and your goals because I'm worried about getting the boys dinner or getting them a bath if you're training. And, and what has been really nice is as things have progressed, you have said, you know what, I'm not willing to miss dinner. I'm not willing to miss reading stories at nighttime. And you have, again, made that shift to say, I want to be there for that. So I'm changing my training because I don't want to miss bedtime routine. And maybe, I mean, I think most parents know out there, oh my gosh, bedtime routine. Sometimes you're like, let's just get this over with. Okay. I've read 10 books, yep. but you were like, no, I'm missing out on this. And I, I want to be there. So that's kind of the training aspect. And then competition wise, you know, I used to come to competitions and, and I was your person, you know what I mean? I was there and I was right beside you. And, and now, you know, I, if I, if I even come to the competition, I am usually there because the boys are there. And my job is to, you know, keep them happy, keep them cool, keep them entertained. And, and so they're, they're four and six. They just turned four and just turned six. And, you know, it's hard for them when they're outside all day and it's hot yeah. and you get to watch 30 seconds of daddy competing over a six hour time period. 
And so my goal is to try to like focus on them and help make them happy. And so I feel a lot of my attention has been pulled away from you there in the person, you know, because I'm not beside you. I'm not carrying your bag or whatever it may be, but the thoughts are no different now than they were, they were before, but you know, father's day just passed and Braxton gave you a father's day, um, card and he said, what was it say? What's your favorite memory with dad? Or favorite thing to do with that. Favorite thing to do with that. And yeah. it said to come to your competitions. Yeah. And so I think it made both of us feel really good because we thought like, okay, you just got home from a competition and you were yeah. outside, what, six days in the hundred degree heat. And we kind of thought he was not struggling, but it was hard to pay attention for a six year old. Well, I guess at that time he was technically still five. But he remembers, and yeah. he—that's his favorite thing to do with you. So, yeah. no, it's 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 special, and it's it's. Uh, I've always tried to appreciate what it's like for you behind the scenes a little bit, and and you're not necessarily walking out there to perform, and you're not the one. Thank goodness, because yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not you're not in the training all the time, like mm-hmm. having to go through it. But you're being supportive the entire time, and like you said, the support has had to shift a little bit in the way that, that we've dealt with it. But I feel like we've done a pretty good job overall. And, you know, I, I try to, to do a good job also of being able to flip a switch to go from being in dad mode. So when I'm in dad mode, what, what I really like to do is try to be present and do that the best that I can. And then, you know, the business stuff, like if we're going to talk business or I need to handle business stuff, go into that, that mode. And then if I'm going to go into training, I really try my best, not that I do it perfect all the time, but I try to walk into training, I get into training mode. And then when I'm done with training, I, whether I had a a frustrating day, great day, you know, whatever, I feel like we're making it sound like I have all these frustrating days (laughs) of training, but I don't, I don't really have that many. It's, it's just... You know, I'm, but you also always, always want to strive to be better. This is it. That's, that's <laughs> so, more of it. So it's Brian like, can hit a PR and yeah. be like, oh, I should have hit a yeah. 10 pound PR, not <laughs> a five pound PR. <laughs> I should have done better. And that's, I think that's more of what it is, but I still try to leave that at the door in the gym. So when I come back, um, into the house or with you or whatever that, you know, I get to be present with you as well. And I think that that's one of the most important things in maintaining the relationship because if I was never able to turn off the training mode and I was letting that dictate all of my life where I would go in the gym and then out of the gym I'm the same person and I'm trying to you know be stressed about that and I'm not putting my attention to the boys or into you or into business whatever like we we never would have been able to to do all of this Absolutely not. so I think that that it's important to understand that for parents out there, right? To relate to people that might be listening. Look, you might have your job that you have to handle, but you might have to cut out some time in the morning, cut out some time at night. You know, maybe it's before the kids are up. Maybe it's after they go to bed. And that's what you and I have have had to do. Yeah, not to oversimplify it, but strongman's your, your job. You walk in the gym door and you clock in. Yeah. And you walk out the gym door and you clock out. Yeah. And you then come home and your dad or whatever. And yeah. I know that sounds like overly simple and, but you are good at that. You're good at, okay, now it's time to turn training off and you come in the house and you're dripping sweat and the boys are like, all right, dad, get down on the ground. We're yeah. going to ride you like <laughs> a horse. Turn, it, turn into a bear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you, you are very good at that. And that's a weakness of mine. I'm more of like a multitask, everything all sun up to sundown. But yeah. I think it's, it's good to, to do those things. But you also said it fits just a chunk of time in the morning before the kids get up or whatever. And you're also really good at little things things that make a huge difference um we used to leave notes all the time and i think we still do like i left a note this morning i was heading out to the the doctor with the boys and left you a note but like two days ago i was like i'm so tired gosh i want some pre-workout for the morning and i woke up to you had mixed me pre-workout and put it on um on my nightstand so it's doing those little things 
that maybe take you an extra two minutes at night when you're really tired, yep. but you know how big of a impact on me that makes in the morning or like such a big smile on my face. And, you know, this morning I'm running out the door and I was trying to get the dog back in the crate because the painters were coming and the kids, I'm like, we're going to be late for the doctor. But I stopped and wrote a quick note uh, telling you I love you and have a great morning. And I think those little things, yeah. it's 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. But I know for me, it makes a huge difference in my day when you do things like that for me. Um, so maybe that's well, just and another me, And me too. And it's it's... I think that's part of the communication in, in some extent, even though it's, it's just a thoughtful thing. Right. And I think that that's something, you know, as busy and as crazy as things have been for us, cause they have been, and, it, and it's, it's been, been something that's, you know, we've had to work through. Uh, and I would like to think that as we go through these challenges and, and I think every challenge that I go through, I take it as, okay, if I can endure this, I can get through this. I get stronger. I get better. And that's how I always process it. Right. But with us, I think that it's also made our marriage stronger with all of the different stuff that we've had to go through and to overcome and to get I would past. Agree with that. And, Absolutely. You know, I mean, people even said to us, okay, you guys are building a house, but you're, you're literally building a custom house. You're going to have to pick everything and you have to pick everything together. And I think there's multiple people that said, wow, this is really going to test your marriage. I love the process with you. Yeah. Um, we communicated, like, I don't know, I think maybe I'm tooting our own horn. Yeah. <laughs> but the process, it was a hard process. But we really, I felt it was like a way for us to connect. Yeah. And we would discuss, you know, the cabinets. We would discuss the countertops. And it was a give and take. What is important to you? What, what am I saying? Like, okay, that's not that important to me. And then yeah. vice versa. Like, things where you know, that's not that important to you. And you're going to let me make that decision. For sure. But as a whole, building a custom house and making every single decision is hard. Yeah, it's it really, really hard, yeah, yeah, <laughs> hard yeah. on top of yeah. everything else we yeah. but you, are doing. <laughs> you learn. And I think maybe some of the stuff that we had to go through before as we have grown and, um, you know, kind of evolved together, it helped us with that because we had to make business decisions Prepare that were us, tough right. or whatever. And and I think that it, it did strengthen, you know, what we, what we are together. And I think that that's important. And it's, you know, it's fun to talk to you about this stuff. And, and I think it's hopefully going to be fun for people to understand, you know, Hey, there's, there's somebody that's right by my side. That's helping me, you know, through all of this. And, you know, we're very much family oriented and we involve the boys in, a, in everything that we do. And yeah, the boys, they they know what we do, but they don't really know what we do. Yeah. But, you know, they say, oh, this this is the store. And, well, what are we doing with these? We're sending these these gifts to our friends. Yeah. And they help put stickers on boxes. Sure. And they're in the gym. And I want to be strong like dad. And they get it, but they don't get it. But they're here. Everything we do is is based around family. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's important. Again, it, it, it just goes back to being real. Right. So it's, we're not going to be, I don't, I honestly don't know how people do that. Like they can, they can have this gear where they switch into, Hey, I'm on camera. I'm not on camera. Like, you know, and, and anybody, again, like I said earlier with me, will know that because it's just like, Hey, I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to do things the best that I possibly can. And that's, that's what you're going to get. And well, unfortunately the people watching me on Instagram also, also get that. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Every morning it's like, I haven't you know, even rinse my face, but I am in the gym. I'm getting my workout in. And with me, it, it, it you get what you get with me. Yeah. And, and it's because I honestly, it's just too tiring to try to be something that I'm not. Yeah. And I think I've had to evolve at first in all honesty. At first I tried to hide from everything because I was scared to not look perfect. I don't know. I don't know what that was. And so I would just try to hide because I didn't want people to see the real me. And I've gotten to the point that like, Hey, th this is me. And I think maybe becoming a mom has helped with that too, because women may, you know, choose to become a mom and it's hard. It's not, it's not perfect, but what makes it worse is if you feel alone, if you 
as silly as it sounds, you're looking on social media. Oh, well, well they can do it. That it's perfect for sure. them. Look how great they look or look how put together everything is. Yeah. In my opinion, it, it's not like that. And so why, why pretend it is we are who we are and you just be real. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that that's important. So what let's talk about coming up. What's next. We're in the, in this new building. The podcast room is not finished yet for everybody that has asked that this white wall is not going to stay here forever. It's going to be something much cooler and the table will not be a plastic table. Plastic and the, the folding weight plate, table. Yeah. The weight plate might have to, this kind of started with us. So we, we may have to hang that up somewhere, but the microphones will not be up with a weight plate. So we, we have some growth. We have some things to take care of um, here that will be coming. Um, but the big thing for us right now is the Shaw Classic, right? That's the next big thing. And, and like you said, our, I feel like our daily, daily schedule is very much kind of being consumed by that to some extent. I'm trying to take care of the equipment side of it. You're trying to deal with athletes and, um, you know, we've got to deal with travel. We've got to deal with planning. We've got to deal with the event, when we're going to get in, the schedule, all this type of stuff. But as far as, you know, giving back, this is a way that we're trying to give back. And it's something that I think is very near and dear to our heart, you know, with the sport of strongman, I've loved the sport of strongman and trying to give back to the sport. This is a contest and, and I've said it's by the athletes and for the athletes. And that's exactly what we're trying to get done. So, um, you know, for anybody that, that is listening, it's August 13th and 14th. It's at the Budweiser event center here in Colorado. Uh, tickets are available still. I think they're, they're selling they're really selling. well, they're selling. Um, which is awesome. But there, are some but still available. there are some, uh, still available and, and, uh, we're going to live stream the event. It's going to be a full live stream and, and, uh, you know, um, a good portion of all of the ticket sales and the live stream will be going back to the athletes to raise the money uh, that we give away to them. So, you know, supporting the event, like it's a way that, that, you know, through our companies, uh, you know, with evolution athletics and undefined nutrition and Shaw strength, that is what kind of opened the door for us to even put this foot forward and start this process. And, you know, that support, for us, for our brands and for the, you know, the Shaw classic and the growth that has been there has been tremendous really. And I'm so thankful for it. I, I'm, I'm, I know what, what we've got in front of us. I know how much hard work we have in front of us, but you know, the messages and, and, um, support that, that we have received overall for this event, make me so excited to go, you know, I, we're going to finish this podcast and I've got to go deal with the car leg press yep. literally right after this. So, and I'm going we, back to programs and yeah, athletes. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the shawl classic is similar to, to the businesses in the sense of, you know, it started with one t-shirt, very, very, very humble beginnings. And the shawl classic started with, and not to downplay it, but it, let's just say it, what it is. A couple guys in the garage. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 that's what it was. One hundred percent. And, and yeah. uh, James behind the camera, so we could film it and get it out for people to watch. Yeah. And you have to start somewhere, and th that's what where we chose to start with the business or with the Shawl Classic. But you have to start. You got to take a step, and um, and then each day you take another step, and you want to help it grow. And I just so thankful I, like you said so thankful to the people that have supported us have supported the shawl classic has supported the athletes you know i got to talk to a lot of the athletes at at worlds this year they're so excited they're so thankful for the fans yeah um you know without the athletes it's not possible but without the fans it's not possible yeah and we're so thankful for it and you know we are where we are right now but every day and every year we hope to make it, make it bigger and better. And we're just really thankful for the people that have believed in it from, from the garage in the driveway. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even, even with that, it's, it's kind of the same thing. I think, you know, you, I think you said in this earlier, you said that I wanted to print more t-shirts or whatever it might've been. And you're like, Brian, you're crazy. That's, that's not going to work. And it's a lot of money and it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of putting yourself out there without knowing what's going to happen. And I think we had several conversations about this with the Shaw Classic because, you know, at the, people don't realize how much it takes on the back end, right? It's, it's great to talk about, yeah, we're going to increase the prize money, but 
What about the travel? What about the hotels? What about the transportation? What about all these other costs on the back end to make this whole event happen? The the food of you. Oh my gosh. (laughs) All the other athletes, the size of you. Well, big, big shout out to trifecta because they came on. Big shout out to trifecta. They help help us us feed, um, feed you guys a lot of the times, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's a huge, huge undertaking. So you kind of have to take a risk. I guess that's what I'm trying to, take to get a risk. out. You, yeah. It's it's stepping out of your comfort zone. But I and I've said this too, and you know this, and it, I don't I don't maybe say it often enough, but you know, through starting Evolution Athletics, starting Undefined Nutrition, having those companies grow, the goal is to give back, yep. right? And and not to not to say hey well yeah we're gonna have this company and we're gonna pretend to give back and we're gonna we're gonna talk about how cool it'll be to give back no we're doing it right like and that's something that's important to me for people to see is if if you support us there we're putting we're putting it forward and and like this event is the goal is to grow it right and and i don't know exactly what that looks like i don't know exactly how that's going to come I, I can't tell you. Yeah, people ask us where it's all the go, time. But. Well, next year this, next year that. I don't think we know. In in yeah. full transparency, we do not know yet. Yeah. What tomorrow or next year, I should say, looks like with the Shaw Classic. But all we do know is, our goal is to try to make a difference, and and I mean, make the sport better. Yeah. Than where well, you started. All you all you have to do is look at that and say we started in our garage gym basically like where where the gym was we cleared that out we made it happen we made it happen when a lot of people said we couldn't a lot of people told me i even had you know some I of the may guys have been one of those is like oh, yeah. i don't know if we can do that and i told you i need a week to think about well this. some i mean i <laughs> i had some of the guys with that contest message me and say because there was regulations or whatever you want to call it where you weren't supposed to have so many people together you weren't and i said you know what they, they messaged me and say, Brian, what are you going to do if they come? And I said, I'm going to tell them it's my property and we're doing it. Mm-hmm. And we backed down from nothing, from nothing. Like in the face of adversity, there was no back down. There was only forward. And now it's easy to say, well, yeah, we went forward. But but where we're going with that, again, and this is something I'm passionate about. It because was scary at first. Yeah. Scary in the sense of it was a huge risk. Yeah. And and I'm again very thankful that there was a, com- a few companies that supported us, big time, because of connections that you had made. But right from yeah. the beginning, we pulled that money out of our companies that we Absolutely. have <laughs> we had yeah. started, so yeah. we could fund it. And then yeah. we, like I said, we're so thankful for the companies yeah. from the beginning that said, you know what, Brian, we believe in what you're doing. We're going to step in and support you. And those companies are now here still this year. Which is, I mean, that's again, it's Rogue Fitness. They, yeah. they stepped up because they heard what I put out there. I didn't ask them. They came to me. Yeah. And the same thing with Trifecta. Yep. Same thing. And and it's like that relationship, but also what we're doing. So, you know, it's the growth the will athletes. happen there. I have to say the athletes. Oh, yeah. They, those athletes were like, okay, I'm going to fly around the world and come to you, your garage. And we, we didn't have much to promise them at first. No. Um, and they didn't even ask. They well, didn't even of, ask. They were like, oh, the, I'm, the, I'm in. You know, the, cra- the craziest part of that is some of the guys the first year literally said to me, I don't even care about prize money. Yeah. I don't care about getting paid. It's just I want to come support it, and I want you to be able to do it again. Yeah. Right? And how crazy is that? Think of that. World, world-class athletes, and they yeah. just believed in the vision. And thank you. Thank you to them if they yeah. listen to this. But Yeah. No, um, I... Uh, and that's, 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 uh, I think something, you know, just to touch on that just a little bit, these are, these are guys that have somewhat paved the way, right? They, they've, they've paid the price to grow the sport of strongman and, and, and to make it what it is in a lot of ways. I mean, I think it's fair to say that now with where it's gone to. And I think that some of the younger athletes need to hear that. I think they need to hear that example and say, you know what, these, these guys are coming in. They're not worried about prize money. They're not worried about whatever. They're just worried about helping it grow Mm -hmm. and making it better. And guess what? Those guys that very first year with what we did, we put up, said, we're going to put up $25,000, right? 
And then when it was all said and done, we gave away roughly 55,000 because I said that people that bought this, you know, paid to watch it, that type of thing, we were going to try to put that money back in. And so we, we were able to, to more than double the first year. And then in the second year, we got to a hundred thousand dollars we gave away, which is, I mean, second year contest, a hundred thousand dollars, right? Which was actually eight months later, eight months later. (laughs) Yeah. So not even a year later. Now, now we we're, we're on the verge of, I don't know what we'll be able to do this year, but I, I want nothing more than that, than to beat that in a big way. I would love to be able to do that. And so it couldn't have started if, if those guys that first year wouldn't have said, Hey, Brian, I see what you're trying to do. I believe in it. I'm going to come. It never would have got there. And now it's, it's again, you have that mentality of like, I think it's be the change. I, I always, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's a whole quote, but simply put, be the change. And if you want to see something happen, or if you want to see a change, you have to be part of that change. You have to pave the way. And I guess everyone can make their decision how, how they make that change. But those, in my opinion, those guys stepped up and they believed in it. You know, some of those guys competing before I've ever really known maybe what strongman was, but they've been fighting to, to grow the sport Mm -hmm. and they've shown up year or competition after competition or year after year to make things better. And in my opinion, you got to show up, you got to be the change. You got to, you got to be there from day one, step one, if you want to help be part of the change. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, we could, we could probably get (laughs) off on that, that tangent a lot. And, and, you know, it's, it's no different than, uh, knowing who came before you, right. And, and and what they, what they, what they had to go through. And that's a big thing for me, knowing all of the past, you know, for example, the past winners of world's strongest man, Yeah, I I can tell you, I can tell you literally every single one But without them, you would not have had the opportunity you have. Absolutely. And, and yeah. And, and then I've been able to kind of carry the torch Yeah, and hopefully in 10 years, someone now has opportunities that you didn't have. Yep. And I think that, I think that's the goal. Yeah. Um, if you want to make changes, you're helping create that. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, again, hopefully we can, we can play our part in, in helping that grow. And, and, uh, you know, I mean, the people that have supported the, you know, supported the Shaw classic, you know, just everything that we're doing, it, it's, it's so meaningful. Uh, I know to you, but also to me, you know, to both of us, it's something we talk about very frequently. And I think that, you know, hopefully we've been able to kind of touch on that a little bit, you know, that it means a lot in that event will be consuming for us. But at the end of it, I can only wait to see the smiles on the athletes faces and the crowd, right? The energy in that. Can you, Do you even... remember feeling the energy last yes. year, yep. last year in the uh, Estes Park uh, event center? Event center. Yeah. Those athletes said in all of their careers, and some of those guys have been competing yeah. some longer than you, I think. Maybe was, was did Zadrunas compete last year? I should yep. know that. Yep. And you guys, you know, but they have said they had never in their career felt energy like that. Yeah. And and I maybe we got, it's we the got setting. several of those comments. Yeah. And from the fans too. And maybe it was the setting or whatever, but it, it gives me chills thinking of it. And it's just yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's gonna, it's gonna make all the work. <laughs> it's gonna make all the hard work and dedication from you and I and our team worth it when we get there. And, and anyway, I'm I'm really excited and and you know the growth um, that we're hopefully gonna experience with that and and everything else like as as we go along. And you know, it's just kind of that. Uh, hopefully, you and I can keep putting out that message and and um, you know maybe answer more things as we go along and you know share. Because that's that's what's important too is is I think that you and I, for people out there, it's important. It's important to me. It's important to you, to be able to re- try to relate to other people because, you know, us having kids, us having a, a great marriage, us doing these things as a family, or you know, doing a business. You know, it's trying to grow all these things. I think that that hopefully a lot of people can see what we're trying to do and see the work and try to relate to that like in some way. And hopefully 
they can carry it over to their own lives in in some way because that's really what it's all about is trying to give back and, and I would have say that it's, relationship. it's active. Like we are constantly trying to have a good marriage. We're yeah. constantly trying our best to be parent, good parents. I'm sure we're not perfect, yeah. but it's always, it's just about continually trying Absolutely. and trying to be a little bit better tomorrow. And that that's from, from our family, from our marriage, that's to our fitness or, you know, your, your strongman career, but it's to our companies. And I hope that people can take that message from us is just, just keep trying. Like yeah. it's one, one extra step tomorrow, but then you do that day after day, week after week, year after year, it's going to make a difference. Yeah. It's well, it's going to make a, a big difference. It really will. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's fun, you know, to have you on. And I feel like we got all these questions and went in a, a different perspective. So maybe we can do it again with a little bit different angle, yeah. um, as well, but, uh, hopefully some, some people can get some stuff out of this. Uh, and I think they're, I'm excited for them to get to know you a little bit more like what you do. And, you know, I mean, to be fair, what you do, like I said, at the beginning of this, what you do for our family, number one, but also for the business and everything else, like operation wise, it wouldn't be possible without what you do. Right. So it's, it's fun. And yeah, I get to have the microphone or be in the gym <laughs> train and put all the fun video stuff out and whatever, but it's like, you know, the support people on the back end, I think can see what you do. And, um, you know, that is meaningful to me too, because it really is near and dear to our hearts. And, and I think it always will be, you know, cause if somebody supports us, that means they took out, you know, time, effort, money, whatever to, to help, say, Hey, I'm going to support Brian and Carrie. And that is meaningful yeah, to super, us. And, super, I mean, yeah, I can't put into words how meaningful that is it's huge, to us. Huge. Um, yeah, it, 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 it amazes me yeah. every single day. And I mean, we've been working together now uh, about four years and every single day, yeah. it still blows me away. Well, I've, I've felt that <laughs> I felt that since I got my very first orders. Yeah. Like a very first website, very first orders, people would li like the fact that they would go in and, and want to get a shirt or, you know, buy a pair of stone sleeves or whatever it might be like at that time was so cool to me. And it's yeah. still, it's still that way. Right. And so it's still like appreciation. And I think that, that, um, you know, that's something people can see. And I think that, that why it's helped the growth, but we're not going to ever lose that no matter no matter where we go, that attitude will always stay the same. So yeah, definitely. I mean, I I don't forget for a second where where it started no. and the 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 struggles we've been through and the struggles that we still go through yeah. to to do what we do. And I'm forever grateful. I'm forever grateful to you and to all the supporters. Um and you know. We just keep trying. Yep. <laughs> like you said, we, we wake up each day and try to yeah. try to get better. So I think we can wrap it up there. Okay. And, uh, you know, definitely appreciate everybody tuning in and checking out the podcast. And uh, if you got something out of this, if it helped you out, you know, any part of the message, please share it because that's the way that we're going to grow this even more is, you know, through you telling somebody you talk with or sharing it on your social media or whatever uh, to get the word out. So definitely appreciate that guys. Appreciate you, babe, for coming on. Thanks, babe. And uh, hopefully um, you weren't too nervous. <laughs> My hands sweated only like yeah. halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you calmed down. So, uh, you know, it is good. what it is. This is, this is us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, definitely appreciate all of you. Love you. And uh, hope you're doing amazing for now. Go out and be great. And we'll check you guys later.